Hi, this is Ibarian X from The Candid Frame. And we've talked about shadows before, but I want to talk about high contrast, which is kind of the same, but a little bit different. And I chose three images to discuss what I'm thinking about. Here we have a shot by Marcello Serralo. This was made with a Sony ILC 5000 and an exposure of 1 60th of a second at F5 at ISO 1250. Now, here Marcello is faced with a sort of a challenging situation that any of us face when you're photographing performers on a stage. Um, normally, when you're photographing performers, uh, the light is very fixed. You have spotlights or stage lights that are focused on the performers, and then the rest of the scene almost immediately goes to black because of the light fall off. Um, unless it's a play where everything is fairly evenly illuminated, um, you're dealing with scenarios like this, especially, especially if you're uh, photographing singers uh, in a club, for example. And what happens is that the light falls on the subject and the musicians, and then the rest of it just falls immediately to black because there's not much illumination on that scene. And then in order to create an interesting composition, you're often having to sort of move the singer, the performers around in the frame, trying to make something something much more interesting than just planting the subject in the very center of the frame and making the shot. At that point, you really depended on the, on the performer producing an interesting facial expression or a hand gesture in order to make the shot interesting. The challenge for any, any person who shoots this regularly is the idea of how can you be less dependent on the subject itself to pr produce an interesting photograph and how can you take the elements within the scene and put them within the frame and make an interesting shot. And Marcello, what he does here when he places the singer and the piano player in the lower right-hand corner, he's actually using the lights as sort of a counterpoint to create a nice balance to the image. Because if it weren't, if it weren't for the lights that we're seeing here at the top of the frame, the composition would be imbalanced. And the singer here is in, sort of engaged. She's singing here, the guy's sitting on the piano. But the moment with the singer and the piano player in and of itself isn't particularly interesting. Uh, it's, it's a nice moment, but it wouldn't make the shot exceptional. I think what gets this shot a little closer to that mark is the idea that Marcello is playing around with composition and taking these, these elements that are within the scene and playing with them and trying to create a much more interesting composition. Because with high contrast scenes, one of the things you're contending with is the fact that you're dealing with highlights and shadows and oftentimes very little middle gray. That's just the nature of high contrast lighting. Um, you have the light hitting your subjects. They're brightly illuminated. But the shadows, they're pretty dark or completely black. And you have to think about how much of that negative space is going to dominate your frame. And often the easiest solution is to just focus on your subject, get in as tight as you can, and just hope that they give you something interesting. But when you start pulling back as Marcello does in this shot, you're walking a little more of a tightrope, but it really pays off as it does with this image here. Here we have a shot by Saman A. Ali. This was made with a uh, Fujifilm X-T1 at 1 250th of a second at f5.6 ISO 200. So this is a, a welder. And in this particular shot, the welder uh, is actually producing his own light source. And it's illuminating his face and his arms and his body as he, you know, uh, as he squats down on the scaf scaffolding and, and goes to work. And then you have this wonderful light in the background of the sun uh, of the sun setting. It's a beautiful, beautiful scene. And, and Saman does a wonderful job at, at uh, creating this composition. But it's also a very sort of high contrast scene because a lot of the area behind the welder immediately goes to black, as does elements in the scene here down in the, in the, in the ground. If we have any really sort of serious middle gray, it largely exists with with the clouds. Uh, they're the only sort of middle gray that we have to deal with. Largely, it's it's a high contrast scene. And, it, and, it, and it's very dramatic. And I think that's one of the appeals of high contrast lighting and high contrast scenes is they can be uh, very, very striking. I know a lot of people will take a shot that was not shot in 
you know, high contrast lighting, and then they'll render it as a high contrast scene in Photoshop or Lightroom. And it's not always the same thing for me. For me, when I see that, I feel like the effect calls attention to itself rather than the image itself being allowed to allowed to sing. Uh, when I when I see that in a shot, I immediately think about the processing. I'm not thinking about the subject or the composition or anything like that. And and not to say that you shouldn't do it, but I think that if uh, if you're going to use that, you always want to think about the underlying bones of a photograph. If you're using the high contrast techniques in post processing to sort of save an image, I think you're thinking thinking backwards. You should always be thinking, you know, when you're making the photograph about making it as effective as possible. And uh, I think Saman does that here. Uh, the shot is it's just a great moment, and I just love how he used those extremes in tones, but also the gesture of the guy leaning forward, grabbing the bar, and um, and welding whatever he's welding here. If anything, I would have probably have liked to have a little more breathing room over here to to the right, um, but uh, it's a it's a small small quibble, and you can't argue with the quality of the sky in that in that shot. Uh, in a lot of high contrast scenes, you'll see expanses of black, like in the previous shot. Here, the the areas of shadow are right behind him and on the and on the uh, bottom of the frame here uh, that help create the the high contrast feel of the shot. But uh, they're really important to make the shot really work. I mean, you could have imagined this shot with a with a fill flash to fill in these shadows here but i like the fact that it's so dramatic that it's so high contrast it really works beautifully for me okay here we have a shot by roman lunin uh just before you started thinking that i was only going to show black and white images here's a high contrast color shot which i think is just as effective as the black and white images that i just showed you here we have this girl coming uh, down these steps of a place that looks like it's maybe a church i see a woman holding a candle and that's what the child is holding in her hand is is a candle so i suspect it was some sort of ceremony so we have multiple light sources here we have the light source of the candle being held by the girl which is beautifully illuminating her face and then we have the light source of the woman near the top of the stairs who's whose candle is illuminating her chin and then we have the light sources that are just above the door that are illuminating um, the facade of the door and silhouetting, helping to silhouette the man who's walking through that doorway with the bag in his hand. And then the rest of the scene is relegated to, to shadow. Uh, we're normally seeing in color, so you're not typically seeing in black and white unless you've got your camera set for that black and white uh, processing mode so that you can see through the viewfinder or the LCD to see see in black and white. Uh, we're seeing in color. So sometimes it can be really hard to discern this high contrast thing that we're talking about. But, you know, if you just pay attention to where the light is, where it's falling and where it's not falling, this whole concept of high contrast reveals itself really, really clearly. And I think it does uh, in, in this scene, that Roman shot. The light sources... Uh, if you look where the light sources are, you immediately look to where the light is falling. And then as you scan the frame, you realize where the light is not falling. And th that that high contrast quality is a result of where the light falls and where it doesn't fall. And you can see how uh, in this shot, it, it accentuates not only the details of the girl's face, but also the details of the door. Uh, the outline of this woman's face, the outline of this body. I love how the light hits the top of these steps. So this this area is not just completely black. Uh, there is some sort of separation on these steps. So you have an understanding that she's walking down these steps. You see the highlight here on this piece of metalwork here on the door before it takes a jump into shadow. You see a little highlight here of light on what may be a piece of clothing on on a person who's standing behind this woman here and 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 it's it works remarkably well for me uh i wish we were getting a little more uh detail here on her hand and the candle because we're we're losing a bit of detail there it's 
kind of not immediately obvious that she's holding a, a candle, but that's that's one of the tricks about exposing for a scene like this because there's so much shadow. If you're using the multi-pattern metering of your camera, the camera is trying to give you an average exposure for the entire scene as it's playing out. And if you're not too careful, you can get these areas of blown highlights. Uh, you're getting it here and you're getting it here. Yes, you end up losing even more shadow detail when you bias the exposure in that way. But is the shadow area, area really that important in this shot? No, no. What's important is the area area, area of highlight and sort of mid-tone to, to quarter tones. That's what's key here. And even though we don't get the detail of the, of the candle here uh, for, this, for, for this shot, there's enough information there for me to get a sense of it. And you can see how the high contrast scene and the rendering of the shot in terms of exposure really makes the colors pop. And that's that's one of the benefits of shooting a high contrast scene in color is that it accentuates the colors that exist within the frame. And so you don't always have to think about high contrast in terms of black and white. Uh, consider color because it can be just as dramatic and just as beautiful as anything that you're doing uh, in monochrome. Okay, as always, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you're in the Los Angeles area during the weekend of April 8th, I will be conducting a street photography workshop through the Los Angeles Center of Photography. It runs, uh, it's one day and it runs from 10 to 6 p.m. Uh, we usually photograph in downtown Los Angeles or in Hollywood. And then I always save time at the end to have people download the images so we can do a critique. So we go through a whole process of me show, showing you how I shoot, uh, sending you off into the streets to make your images and to come back and have a discussion about the work that you've produced. Uh, if you want to check that out, all you need to do is go to lacphoto.org and sign up. There's still spaces available and, and check it out. And if you've not heard of The Candid Frame before, we are a podcast which features conversations with photographers from every genre and from all over the world. We just recently had an interview with photographer James Maher, who we've had on the show before and who is more popularly known as a street photographer, though he's also a portrait photographer and a commercial photographer. And he just released a new book on the business of photography that we sat down and talked about. So if you have an interest in making a living as a part-time or a full-time photographer, and you're not sure exactly how to do some things right, well, we had a real in-depth conversations about some of the good things and bad things that we do as photographers when it comes to earning a living with a camera. So check that out. And uh, again, if you want to contribute to the Flickr pool, all you have to do is go to the Candid Frame Flickr pool and just ask to be added, and I'll be glad to do so. So thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.